stop. Hello guys, so serious video today, serious video. Um, a lot of emails about how to get over an ex. Okay, well, you know, I've read a lot of stupid blogs and even YouTube videos about, you know, this issue. And a lot of them don't really get down to the bottom of it. Uh, what I mean is that they don't really uh, reduce love down to the neurochemicals. So they're like, oh, this happened to me and try this out. It might work for you. But that doesn't really work, does it? Because each person's situation is different. So unless you really understand the, uh, uh, really deconstruct love down to the, uh, the neurons, down to the, you know, the neurochemicals of things, then, and then apply that information, you know, plug it into your own situation. And it's really hard to give a concrete advice on something that's, you know, so different in each case, you know. So I want to talk about love as an addiction, you know. Basically, uh, addiction is just something that the brain craves because somehow it thinks that um, it's better for you as an organism. Uh, increases your chance of survival or passing out your genes. So basically, if you look inside of a brain of a person who is in love and a brain of a drug addict, it will basically look the same. You know, certain chemicals get released, you know, for love is like serotonin and, you know, oxydotin and stuff like that. And uh, once those chemicals get released, it makes you feel good. And your brain creates sort of this little map for you that wants you to go back to being with that person who made you feel that way again and again and again. And uh, each time you be with that person each time you see like this is what I like to do if I'm in love with a person I like to go to her and pretend like she's my 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 drug my fix and I'll just like sniff her or like get, like that like this fuck that felt good you know you know what I'm talking about right it makes you feel good just like the little that's like your like a like a line right there coke something like that why I think that if you want to get over an ex, you have to reconfigure your fucking brain. You have to re relink, reconnect the circuitry. The map now makes up your love for this person or makes up that relationship. What happens when you go out with a person for a year? You go out, you do the same things. You watch the same films, you listen to the same music, you know, even a walk down the park, you're perceiving similar events. So what happens is that your brains are molded to be more alike. And that is serious. Your brain creates a, like a, a sort of like a map, like along with the other person. And those maps align. And basically, the longer you're with this person, the more the bigger the you is inside that person and vice versa. So you're dedicating more of your brain space to that person, right? Or the, your, the shared experience that you have. And the, the connections between the circuits that makes up that map between you and that person or this relationship as a whole become stronger, bigger and stronger. So basically, at first, you know, when you meet this person, it's like a tiny fraction of your brain circuit is, is that person because you experience, what, three days together? Ten years later, how big is that map going to be? How many more connections is in your brain now, are in your brain now, that's dedicated to this relationship or that person or the you in her or blah, 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 or the love for you? 30 years, 60 years. 60 years later, if that person dies or breaks up with you, your whole, like, 95% of your brain circuitry is based off of the experience you have with that person or that or the memories of that person. And you need a new fucking brain. How long does that take? How long is that going to take to, re, to re reconnect, to reconfigure your brain? Another 60 years, maybe? Just get a new brain transplant, man, when that happens. The stronger the connection, then the more you have to wait to weaken it. A part of your heart is gone. That's what people say, right? A part of my heart's been cut off. That's exactly what happens. Sometimes you forget something and then you ask your girlfriend where it is and she tells you and you find it. Or sometimes you go on a long trip with 
be a girlfriend, and then certain memories that you forget you ask your girlfriend about, and she tells you. You sharing each other's memories. That's what's what's happening. You're putting your memories and certain informations inside each other, and you help each other remember. So what happens when that part of you is gone? A big chunk of your memory, a whole part of your fucking brain is gone. A part of you, because we exist inside each other. I made a video about this, you know. It's called Knowing Ourselves, I believe. You know, I talk about this a lot, actually. How we make up each other, you know. I exist inside her brain and she exists inside mine, right? And how we perceive each other makes up a large part of who we are. And if that person is gone, then the me that's inside her brain, the, the, the representation of me at least, it's gone. And what do I do with it? A part of me gets cut off. Of course I'm sad. You gotta replace one addiction with another. That's why people say the best way to get over somebody is to find another person, a new person. You wanna have a different map in your brain. One way to do it is find another person and create a new brain, you know, with that person, you know, new circuitry with that person, you know. That's one way to go at it. And another way to go at it is to learn something else, is to find another addiction, that addiction for a lifting. Right? Break up with your girlfriend and you hit the gym, do it for two months, and then you find out that, wow, this lifting thing really makes me feel pretty good, right? And you want to go back to it. Well, that's a healthy addiction, right? Um, or, you know, I like to read books. You know, I remember uh, um, when I broke up with my ex, I read a lot of books and it really made me got over it. Um, because I was learning about the structure of the universe. Sounds really pretentious, but... I, I was reading about like, you know, relativity and quantum theories and all that stuff. It's once you realize how huge the fucking universe is, right? It, it's, there's nothing to be afraid of. Because you're nothing. Your relationship for two months? Nothing! My advice for you is just to, or you can wait it out. You know, that's why the people say time heals. So the connection between neurons are weaker as time goes by. Man, use your willpower to weaken the connections. You know, even if you don't do a thing, it's still if you don't if you don't see a person for three years, those connections are gonna weaken. But you know, don't call her, don't see her, you know, and don't even think about her. You know, even just the act of thinking about that person makes those connections just a little bit stronger, and it's just I'm not about that little bit harder to get rid of it. And a lot of people, you know, they just can't, they just can't do it. They just, you know, she calls you, go to her house, then you fuck, and that's the worst. You know why? Because that little fuck after three months of Craving it even more is gonna be the best uh, fuck of your life, and then all of a sudden, all the work that you did, all the connections that are loosened just a little bit, gets connected and it's even stronger. That time you fuck after three months, because that's how the brain fucking works. It's our psychology. It's cool. Think about other things. You know, just because pick up other skills. Like I said, find out someone else. You know, like I said, if she's always inside your brain. If all she is is a representation of a certain brain circuitry in her brain, then you can get rid of it. You know, if at first fifty percent of her brain is dedicated to her, you know, slowly making forty-five, making forty, making thirty-five. You know, 